What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another College Football Picks episode. This week is week four, and not only do we have some banger games this week, some absolute blockbuster matchups, we have a special guest. Please welcome fellow YouTuber, fellow college football guy. Link in the description. Please welcome JT Sports. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for having me on, Quincy. I know I've done a lot of stuff on his channel. Um, he has his own podcast. I will link all of it in the description. Make sure you go check him out. I promise it will be worth your time. He has some of the best stuff out there. But are you ready to make some picks? Hell yeah, man. All right. Let's make some picks. We got 26 games on the dock. And to be honest, a lot of times in these picks videos, there are a lot of just easy games. You can just say, oh, yeah, it's easily going to be this team, that team, this team, that team. There are probably only three or four of these games that are pretty obvious. There are a lot of really tough games, so I hope you did your research. I know you always do. So first game we got Friday is Wisconsin at Purdue. Who do you like in this one? I got to go Wisconsin. You know, I've been pretty – well, I was pretty high on Purdue with their new head coach, being the former defensive coordinator that – Illinois, I thought them having Hudson Carr, the veteran proven quarterback, would help them get out to an early start. But you know, they've been fairly disappointing, bro. Like they lost to Syracuse. Syracuse struggled against power five opponents prior to beating Purdue. Then they also had like an ugly upset loss real early. Like I'm going to go with Wisconsin, Wisconsin, even though I'm not the biggest believer in wisconsin i just don't like how the big 10 west looks in general as a whole but i think they should be able to pull it out it may be like a full quarter game but wisconsin probably pulls it out late i just don't think wisconsin's offense is you know clicking on all cylinders yet because you know they are changing from you know smash mouth underneath center old school football to now air raid so I'm still kind of wondering when everything is going to look more efficient. So give me Wisconsin, though. I think they win 31 to 17. All right. So a lot of weird stuff happens on these Friday games, I feel like. Because, you know, it's one less day to prepare. Weird scheduling stuff kind of happens. Some teams don't play their best ball. Some teams thrive. Your stat of the day, though, Purdue has has a – 15-year active losing streak to Wisconsin. They have not beat them in a very long time. And I don't think that changes. I'm going to take Wisconsin 21-7 Purdue. I mean, they've just looked very disappointing. Lost to Syracuse. Lost to Syracuse last year, too. It, it, I don't, Purdue, I feel like, is on the same caliber as IU this year. Next game we got is Saturday, Rutgers at Michigan. Taking Michigan, even though Rutgers does look pretty solid this year, they look formidable for Rutgers standards. And I do believe that they are coming off a win against Virginia Tech last week. I thought Virginia Tech would be able to keep it close, but they kind of annihilated them. And they're three and no um, against Michigan. You're just wondering if they can keep it close into the fourth quarter. Probably not. It's a home game for Michigan. Coach Harbaugh is back. They probably are going to get rolled. I agree. The spread's 24, which, to be honest, if you're Rutgers, I figured the spread would be a little higher. But I'm also going to take Michigan in a pretty big game. Next game is Florida State at Clemson. And this is a game that Clemson desperately needs for any type of treading water this season. Uh, Florida State's ranked number four in the country. Just had a struggle game against Boston College, but Clemson's had a struggle season up to this point. Who gets it done in Death Valley? I like Florida State, even though I'm not incredibly confident about it. If you had to ask me my confidence level with them winning, I'd go three out of five. I know Florida State seems like they have surpassed Clemson in terms of talent. Clemson's unwillingness to utilize the transfer portal probably could be their downfall depending on the outcome of this game. I don't think Clemson's going to get trampled. 
Um, I think a lot of people are severely overlooking the fact that Clemson is one of those teams that gets up for big games. You remember when Dabo Sweeney and Clemson were first on the come up and they were climbing to reach a national championship. They had this underdog mentality that he used to always talk about and try to bring out of Clemson. But eventually Clemson became the top dog and then you couldn't use the underdog mentality. Well, 88% of betters have picked Florida State to win this game. But they're only a two and a half point favorite. Yet they destroyed LSU week one. Yeah, I think. See, here's the thing: Clemson, Clemson will get up for this game. But I mean, I really think that that gap is. I think this could be this. I think this is this is the changing of the guard game for Florida State because. I think this is the game where Florida State gets the baton from Cle- I guess reclaims the baton from Clemson and becomes, I guess, the next powerhouse in the ACC. Because while I think this game will be close, I just think Florida State's the better team. And I know they struggled against Boston College. I'm going to chalk that up as to their preparing for Clemson. I mean, I'm, I wouldn't be too concerned about that game if I was a Florida State fan. I expect them to come in. And uh, win this game. I, I think it would be a four-quarter game. Ultimately, though, I just think Florida State's better. I think that they do end up winning. Next game, new addition to the Big 12. Big noon kickoff will be here. Oklahoma at Cincinnati. I like Oklahoma, even though Emory Jones has looked pretty impressive. They lost last week in really disappointing fashion. Like The thing with Cincinnati – is that they don't really have a lot of experience on offense or a lot of returning starters on offense. They lost to Miami of Ohio in overtime. Like, they lost to Blaine Gabbard's little brother, Brett Gabbard. You know, Emory Jones had an off game. I think Oklahoma, they should pretty much handle business. I think they probably roll Cincinnati probably like 30 to maybe 7 or 10. I I do think Oklahoma will win. I think it might be a little closer than some people expect, just because, I mean, Cincinnati, I feel like they'll get up for this game, but I do think Oklahoma's better by a lot. I mean, Cincinnati, I feel like, will do their best to try to make a statement to start off their Big 12 tenure, but I'm going to have to agree and say Oklahoma. Next we have, in my opinion... The two two incredibly disappointing SEC teams the last couple of years, Auburn at Texas A&M. Which, which who, do you, who do you like here? I like Texas A&M. This is definitely a must-win game for Jimbo Fisher and company. Texas A&M has the far more superior roster. They have 10 five-stars compared to Auburn having none on the roster. Auburn doesn't really have much of a passing attack, neither. Their run, their run game is pretty good, but Texas A&M should suffocate that. And although Miami did have success against Texas A&M, I still think it's more so Miami's going to be a formidable threat in the ACC this year rather than Texas A&M's defense just being a liability. Like, they got way too much talent on that defensive line for them to struggle in this game against an Auburn team that, you know, they're severely lacking talent when it comes to their pass-catching core. So I like Texas A&M to win this game. I think they probably win by at least 10. I I also have A&M. I mean, they, they did get embarrassed by Miami, but they are at home, and I still think they're better than Auburn. I mean, it's they, they do they need this game, and Auburn really hasn't looked great. They had an incredibly ugly game to watch uh, at Cal, and I think like 14 to 10. That was excruciating to watch. Um, so I'm going to go with A&M. Next is, I like putting these games on the board because, to me, I think they're incredibly hard to predict. It's when there are Power 5 teams, a Power 5 team is playing at a Group of 5 team. Because I think they're, I think because usually the Group of 5 team, the crowd shows out and they're crazy and 
a lot of times the big uh, the Power Five team, like look at Alabama, they struggled at South Florida. That's kind of an extreme little example, but these these games happen a lot. And the one that we have on the dock is Virginia Tech at Marshall. Who do you like there? Uh, I I like Virginia Tech. I think Marshall could win this game, but I just think. Virginia Tech, even though like they looked really disappointing, they are a way better football team this season than what they were last year. I do trust them to be able to win against Marshall, even though I kind of wouldn't be surprised if Marshall got the win. I'll still take Virginia Tech. All right. I am going to disagree with you for the first time, and I'm going to take Marshall Mostly because this is a bad Virginia Tech team. I I hate to just rag on them. I really don't think this team is good at all. I mean, they're they're one and two with losses to Purdue and Rutgers. Those are two usually bo- bottom. Okay, Rutgers is usually a bottom of the barrel Big Ten team. Purdue is not as good this year as they were last year. And Virginia Tech also had that game at home, and they couldn't they couldn't produce at home. So. And this is a Marshall team that's one year off of beating Notre Dame. They, they won at Notre Dame last year. So I am going to take Marshall here. Next, we have two Texas schools that are pretty big. This is actually a pretty underrated rivalry game. These two, I think, used to play a lot more than they do now. Um, but we have SMU at TCU. Who we got, who we got in this Texas religion showdown? I like SMU. SMU has a really great offense, and I don't know if you watched the Oklahoma game, but their defense played incredibly well in that game, exceeding expectations. And with them recently joining the ACC, they just got $100 million in donations from their boosters. SMU also brought in a top 15 transfer portal class. They got a really good quarterback in Preston Stone. I think they looked apart for the most part, and TCU – I mean, we still haven't really figured out what kind of team they are since we last mostly saw them against Colorado. And I'd like SMU to get the upset. I don't know about TCU's defense. I kind of got more confidence in SMU's defense than I do TCU, even though TCU does have a veteran group that returns. It's just SMU has so many playmakers, and I think SMU kind of is a little bit more further along in terms of their identity compared to TCU. And plus, SMU, based on talent alone, is the most talented team in all of Group of Five football. If you go off of 247 Sports Team Talent Composite Rankings, they are... 34 35th which is one spot above of Colorado and they got a really good quarterback in Preston Stone they got receivers galore they got a really good running back room their defense may not play as good in this game as they did against Oklahoma but you know I still think that SMU should be able to pull off the win I wouldn't be surprised if they win the American this is probably going to be the best G5 school in college football this season I I agree that SMU is, I think, incredibly underrated. I think I think they're a really good team. And I think you, you kind of saw that against Oklahoma. They really held their own in a pretty evenly matched game. I am going to take TCU. Um, the reason I'm taking TCU is, yeah, they, they suffered that loss to Colorado, but they're, they're still a good team. They, they have two, I mean, enormous, like, dominating wins against Nickel State and Houston. But... They, it's not like they're coming out and, oh, they're struggling again. They've kind of found their footing after that loss. There's, They get the game at home. They're still an incredibly talented team. They still made a national title last year. I think, I know they still, I know they got a lot of turnover. But they're still a really good team. This is a team that I think is still going to be a force in the Big 12. And I feel like people overreacted a little bit to that Colorado loss. Um, Because that was a Colorado team coming in there with an attitude. And that was a team that, I think TCU definitely overlooked. So favorite. They no, they they were. They were 21 point favorites, but I'm still gonna take them against SMU. I think it's gonna be a hard fought game, but I think the hard frogs take it. If, Next, F- if if SMU wins this game though, 
How do you feel about them in regards of them being ranked in the top 25 and them possibly being the I, I think they I think they'd be deserving of a ranked spot if they beat TCU. If they put them at 25 after TCU, I wouldn't have a problem with it. Next game, UCLA at Utah. This is a really interesting game because I don't think I've ever seen a true freshman play this good ever. You look at Dante Moore's performances. He didn't even start week one. He should have. And even with him not starting and coming in here and there, he was still the most dominant quarterback. Dante Moore is going to be a really big difference maker in this game if Cam Rising isn't able to suit up for this game. And we don't really know his injury status at this moment, but their backup quarterback situation doesn't really look great against a really good UCLA defense. UCLA also has a really good defensive line. This is probably the best their defensive line has looked ever under Chip Kelly. And as I'm looking at the news right now, it does say Cam Rising is expected to be available in this game, or at least UCLA is preparing for him to make his debut, but the jury's still out on that. But either way, I kind of like Utah to get the win. I think that, well, UCLA to get the win. I think that Utah, you know, they're a really good team, but I think that UCLA is a little bit undervalued in the Pac-12 because, you know, they don't get as much primetime spots as teams like Utah and whatnot. But I like Utah. I just think that UCLA, just them having the advantage at quarterback, not knowing the status of Cam Rising. And plus, Cam Rising doesn't really play phenomenally great as, you know, what people think. If you go and you look at some of the biggest games that he's played in for Utah, you know, his best performance was against USC twice. Other than that, his performances have been so-so. So I like UCLA and Dante more to get the win. So you're you're taking UCLA? Yeah. Okay. I, I didn't – you were kind of like beating around for a little bit. I didn't really know where you were going to go with that. I think Utah will win. Not only do I think Utah wins, I think Utah wins big. I, I think they win – I think they win big. The reason I think they went big is because UCLA really this is I think this this issue comes to the forefront in this game. UCLA hasn't really been tested this year. Coastal Carolina, San Diego State, NC Central. They won all three of those games, but this is a Utah team that has already been tested against Florida, already been tested against Baylor. And they're coming back to a home crowd that can get wild, man. Utah has some crazy fans. And Dante Moore has looked really good for, for UCLA. This this is a test unlike something he's seen this season. Though. This is a this is a really good Utah defense. I just don't know how UCLA is gonna gonna get points. I mean, I know they have a really good team and good offense. I just think this is a game where they start off slow, and Utah jumps on them early. I think this is very similar to the game they played against Florida. I think it's gonna be hard for them to win on the road, and I think I think Utah wins this one pretty big. Um, so next game is another team that desperately needs a win to keep playoffs alive with a ranked opponent coming to town. Ole Miss at Alabama. These two teams, only two rankings separate these two teams. Bama gets it at home. I went back and forth on picking this one. Who, who, who are you ultimately going with? Can you repeat that one more time? We got thunder in the background. <sighs> You, all right, we got Ole Miss at Alabama. But Boca Man, Raton getting hit by a hurricane or something? Yeah, like, it's just a lot of thunder. And I think it's foreshadowing the revenge that Alabama's about to get this weekend for the two lackluster performances they had. You know, lost to Texas, struggled against USF, Jalen Milrose coming back. And Pete Golding is Ole Miss defensive coordinator. He was Alabama's defensive coordinator for the last couple of years, and – their defensive line looks pretty good. Alabama's offensive line looks still pretty trash. But Jalen Milrow, at quarterback, makes this offense serviceable against an Ole Miss defense that probably won't be able to slow down the run. Jalen Milrow is a really great athlete. And he's a better thrower compared to Tyler Buckner and Ty Simpson. 
So with the fact that he's coming back, this offense should look a little bit better. They should be able to put up 30. They don't need to air it out. They should be able to play the style of football that Nick Saban wants to run, being able to run the football, keep Ole Miss offense off the field. And that's really what has me the most intrigued about this matchup. Alabama's defense against Ole Miss offense. Because if this ends up becoming a game where Ole Miss goes off for like 40 points, I question if Alabama can keep up with it. You feel me? But at the same time, like Ole Miss defense isn't good. I saw them get shredded by Tulane without Tulane having their starting quarterback. So I don't really know how much faith I can put into Ole Miss defense in this game. And if you want to beat Alabama, you got to have at least a little bit of a defense, regardless how bad the quarterback play could be. I like the tie to win. I agree with pretty much every single thing you said. I mean, I think you hit this game on the nose. I mean, okay, Tulane I had I thought was going to be the best group of five team. And I think they would have won that game if they had Michael Pratt, because that guy's a stud. But – Bama's going to I I think they come out with some anger in this game because they really I I still have no idea why they took Jalen Milrow out against South Florida because the two guy the two guys that they had behind them those guys suck. Well the 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 rumor is he got suspended for that game. That's what the rumor is. Like cuz of bad grades or something. It's just a rumor but people or saying that, like, it was something he did, I guess, like, one violation of team rules or something that had him sitting out against USF. Because that's really the only logical way you can justify it based on what we saw against USF. I mean, the gap between Tyler Buckner and Ty Simpson and Jalen Milrow looks pretty wide. And that's why a lot of people kind of believe that. Well, Tyler Buckner was the... He started for Notre Dame last year and, like, shit himself the first two games. Like, he, he didn't know what he was doing. He, that, he, he lost to Marshall. Like, did he get against he USF? Yeah, so, and he, yeah. If it wasn't for Bama's defense in that game, they they I really think they would have lost that game. If they, the fact that they, if they gave up more than three points, I mean, they probably would have lost. But with Jalen Nero coming back, I think that the, I think they, I think they'll definitely be able to win. I think Bama's defense will definitely come out and contain Ole Miss better than they did Texas. And I do think Alabama will win. All right, next, it's a pretty easy game to pick, Tennessee and UTSA. I more so want to talk about what the hell went wrong for Tennessee against Florida. Because as a Tennessee fan, that game, that was infuriating to watch. Tennessee, their offense, their offense, Defensive line got worked by Florida. Florida showed a lot of defensive line depth. And Florida's defense just played the overall good game. People want to point the finger at Joe Milton, but I don't think Joe Milton played bad. I thought he played pretty good, especially in the second half when Tennessee was still trying to stay around. You know, he made a really big throw near the end. And I feel like defensively, their inability to stop the run hurt them, and they're just not good up front. And even last year, they were a little bit better than what they were this season. Maybe Tennessee just isn't the team that a lot of people thought they were coming into this year. You know, they had a big pinnacle year when they won 11 games, and of course, everybody thought that Florida and the rest of the East was going to be down. But Tennessee, I think they're kind of crashing a little bit back to earth. I think they're still a pretty solid team. I think they're a nine-win team, but they just got out-dominated in the trenches. Then, well, they got outperformed up front against Florida. And I get against UTSA, I believe they will bounce back. You know, before this season started, this looked like a really intriguing matchup because UTSA has been one of the better G5 programs, but you talk about what the hell has happened to Tennessee. What the hell has happened to UTSA? Like, they lost the Army, their um star quarterback, well, former star quarterback, and Trayon Harris or Trent Harris, Frank Harris. I think his name is Frank Harris. I mean, this dude has just fallen off the cliff. Like, he threw three interceptions against Houston. I don't know what's going on with UTSA, but Tennessee should roll these boys. Yeah, I also think Tennessee will win. I mean, 
regarding the game against Florida, Florida was getting like eight yards a rush. I mean, their running back was just dominating the whole game. Um, but I think Tennessee will win at uh, Neyland, but they're definitely going to have to win some important games if they want to win the East or something. I don't know if that's on the table or not. But maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Uh, next, two basketball schools, but one has really started to put themselves a nice little season together. 18th ranked Duke travels at UConn. Man, Duke is a football school now. I'm taking Duke, and I like them to cover. Duke, I mean, they, their basketball team was was pretty lackluster last year. I mean, they probably are better in football, if you ask me. <laughs> I mean, they, they're going to have good recruits like they do every year, but. 2023, Still. man, it's wild what you can see in 2023, man. Duke being known as a football school. I mean, hey, maybe they they maybe they make a run with some of these other ACC teams. Speaking of other ACC teams, your Miami Hurricanes at Temple, another one of those Power Five, Group of Five road games. We're going to destroy Temple. We're going to clobber them. We're going to eat them up and spit them out. And Miami, you know, we're we're just getting ready. We're we're going to continue to ramp up before we really start getting into the meat and potatoes of our conference schedule because next week we got Georgia Tech and then we got a big showdown against UNC. So we're gonna clobber the temple. I was I was gonna say that this is gonna be I was gonna say that Miami was gonna come out and struggle because I still don't think Miami really is that great. Um, I know we talked about that extensively on, on your podcast, but Temple did get rolled 35-7 by Rutgers. So I'm going to have to agree that Miami's going to end up rolling them. Uh, next game, you want to okay, you want to talk about a team that looked bad it, last week. Michigan, that might have been the worst game I've seen Michigan State play in a very long time. They, okay, so they played Washington at home. And I thought, you know, Washington's definitely the better team. But Michigan State, I feel like, will hang around. I'm like, they will at least make this a game throughout halftime. It was 35 nothing at the half. It was embarrassing. Fans were leaving midway through the second quarter. It was awful to watch that for Michigan State. I mean, Mel Tucker's gotten the axe. I mean, I, I don't even know what is going on You didn't on see there. that coming? I mean, they got thought about Washington last year, too, but as soon as Mel Tucker got fired, I immediately put a ticket in for Washington. Yeah, I, th- I mean, here's the thing. I'm like, all right, it's a home game. Washington has a far travel. It's a top-10 team. They'll at least get up for the game and, and make it competitive. They couldn't even do that. I mean, they I think they will finish last in the Big Ten East. It's like any time sure teams make a coaching change in the middle of the season, it normally ends up being a disaster. Like most of those teams normally end up just being terrible because you just don't have the coaching. And I think they probably get rolled this week also. They're playing Maryland, by the way. I didn't know if I said that. but they're, Maryland, I feel like, is a really underrated team. They got Tua's little brother. I mean, that guy's good. I mean, I think Maryland is a, is a sleeper team in the Big Ten East. I think Maryland will beat one of – I think Maryland has a strong chance to beat one of the three dogs in the East, being Ohio State, Michigan, and Penn State. I'm not saying that they will. All I'm saying is I think they get two of them. At, I think they get Michigan and Penn State at home. Would not shock me if they won one of those two, but they will come out and they will embarrass And like I, I like Maryland. They did give Ohio State a little bit of a game last year. I gotta see their offensive line get a little bit tested before yeah, I can true. have enough confidence against them. But I think that would be a little bold, but I don't know. It would take a big upset for them to be able to pull it off. Could they do it? Depends if they can get some great quarterback play, but Maryland just doesn't finish games, man. That that's a big knock I have on them. They don't do a great job at finishing games. That's 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 pretty fair. Next, also going to be a future. Or wait, yeah, this is I forgot. This is a Big Twelve conference game. Uh BYU at Kansas. This is a BYU team that came came in and beat Arkansas in in Fayetteville. Do they do the same thing to Kansas? No, I think Kansas should win. 
You see, when you look at Kansas, they are probably the biggest threat in the Big 12, the Texas, not named Oklahoma. And Jaden Daniels has been playing some absolutely outstanding football. And they have one of the most experienced rosters in all of college football. They're like top five, top 10 in returning production. And with how good Jaden Daniels is, there's not a single game that Kansas should not be able to win, even against Texas. What does concern me is BYU is pretty good up front. I wonder if Kansas is going to be able to get off the field defensively, but their defense did play pretty well against Illinois. And as long as Jaden Daniels can avoid getting injured, I think that Kansas should be able to win this one. Although I do think that BYU could keep it close because of how good they are running the football. I am actually going to pull the trigger on the upset. And I'm going to take BYU because this is a BYU team where, I mean, they're great up front. They know how to run the ball. The spread is nine for this game in favor of Kansas. That seems incredibly large. This is a Kansas team that only beat Nevada by seven this past weekend. Nevada got rolled. I'm not one to do the, oh, this team beat this team and this team beat this team. But, like, okay, Kansas beat Nevada by seven. Nevada got embarrassed by Idaho earlier in the year. It was, like, 30-3. to three. I – and this is a BYU team coming hot off a win at, at Arkansas. I really like my chances with this upset because I think they're going to be able to run the ball. And this is a BYU defense that – not a shabby unit. They, they know how to get stuff done. So, I am going to take BYU. All right, next, speaking of Arkansas, uh, we have Arkansas at LSU, who woke the hell up against Mississippi State. They put them in the grave. That was an embarrassing performance from Mississippi State. But do, do, does LSU do that again against Arkansas? I don't know. Possibly. Because it, it's looking a little bit bad bad down there in Fayetteville, Arkansas. There are Arkansas fans who want to put Sam Pittman on the hot seat. That's something I'm going to be discussing tomorrow. The hiring of Dan Enos, me being a Canes fan, <laughs> I, I could have told you not to hire him. <laughs> yeah, like KJ Jefferson doesn't look like the same quarterback that he has looked like the past two years. Maybe Arkansas bounces back in this game because there are a good amount of betters that are picking Arkansas. But I just think that, yeah, because this is a good upset spot. Arkansas is a pretty talented team, but I just think LSU is just so much better. And Arkansas doesn't have a defense, you know, and if LSU is doing that to Mississippi State, I don't see how they wouldn't be able to have a similar performance against Arkansas. Now, do they box Arkansas? I don't know. K.J. Jefferson is a pretty good quarterback. They do got Rocket Sanders. I think they probably could get the 14 or 17, but that defense is terrible, and that offensive play calling, yeah, give me LSU. I don't know if LSU, like, dominates them how they did Mississippi State, but I could see them winning this game by two possessions or more. Yeah, I'll I'll just flat out say it. This is a bad Arkansas team. They're, they're just not that. I mean, I, there was so much hope when, when K.J. Jefferson had him in the top 10, and then, like, the wheels came off last year. They lost to Liberty at one point. It's just not a good time to be a Hogs fan. I think LSU, I mean, I think they embarrass them. I think this is a big, I think it's going to be a big, big win for LSU. All right, I put this game, I put this game on just for you uh, because I accidentally forgot to change one of the games, and I needed one more. Your FAU Owls travel to Champaign, Illinois to take on the Fighting Illini. Do they have a chance to pull off the upset? Yes, because Luke Altmaier is absolutely terrible. But the thing with FAU is that we just lost Casey Thompson to a torn ACL. So that's it for his college career. And, And the other quarterbacks... I mean, we'll see. Illinois does have a pretty good defense. I don't think FAU has a quarterback that really is going to, you know, torch Illinois' defense. They do have a lot of talent, especially up front. They got two NFL guys that could be first-round picks. 
I like Illinois to win, and I think they probably win by at least two possessions. They won't blow out FAU, I don't think, because the style of football that they play, they tend to be a ball control team, and you know what teams like that, they're not going to pull off a lot of incredible blowouts when they put like 60, 70. This is probably like a 31, 10, 31, 17 win by Illinois. Yeah, um, I don't really know much about FAU, but I, I'll just ride. We do got a really good group of running backs. We have Larry McCon- McCannon, who probably is the best running back in the American and then we got Zuberry Mobley. So our running backs are pretty good. But against that Illinois defensive line, I just don't think FAU is going to be able to do too much. Yeah, I'm going to take Illinois. All right, these, ne- these next two teams I really feel bad for. I, I feel for these next two teams. Because to be honest, they have greater issues than playing each other. Because if they don't figure something out, they're about to be playing each other for eternity. Uh, in the two-pack, we have Oregon State. And Wash Oregon State at Washington State. Um, who who you like here? I like this is tough. This this is tough. This is tough. Oregon State's favored by three on the road. Man, I, I gotta go with Oregon State. Washington State did have a really nice win against Wisconsin. Cam Ward is one of the most underrated quarterbacks in college football that nobody freaking talks about because he's playing in a stack Pac-12. But right now, he would be the best quarterback in the SEC easily, in my opinion. But I got to go with Oregon State because they are really good up front. I still don't know if Wisconsin has enough dynamic receivers with them running an air raid offense. They got Cam Ward. I think their defense is solid, too, having a defensive-minded head coach. I just think that Oregon State is slightly better defensively. I think they're kind of a little bit evenly matched offensively, even though Oregon State has Damian Martinez, one of the better running backs in college football. I'll take Oregon State. I think they'll be able to take time off the clock late in this game, and I think that they probably tire out that Washington State defense by midway through the fourth quarter and they take control. Give me Oregon State, like 20 to 14. I can see this being a low-scoring game. This is this is a complete Oregon State team. This is a team that gets it done on both sides of the ball. And to be a contender in any conference, let alone this stacked Pac-12, the, I'll tell you, man, the Pac-12 is going out in a flaming ball of fire with how good they're going to be, with how good they've been this year. I think Oregon State gets the win because this is a team that can win a game 45-35 and can also win a game 14-10 if they need to. I'll tell you, they might... Okay, they... I don't want to say this because I feel like this might come back to bite me. They might be, come year's end, the team to beat the Pac-12. They're that good. You know... You're not the first person I heard that from. I have a homie who has them in the top five. Top, okay. I'm, yeah. I, I want to see a little bit more. They got Utah next week. That'll be, they got Utah at home next week. I want to see a little bit more. But the ukulele can, can ball, man. I mean, he struggled at Clemson. He's found his home at Oregon State. He's really been playing well. I hope, look, I hope a conference picks up Oregon State, man. I really hope they do so they can piggyback off this good year with some success down the stretch because i like oregon state i think we see them in the big 12 you think there there's some talks about them maybe moving to the big 12 also because like why not have you heard anything about washington state well that washington state oregon state it seems like the big 12 they would come together yeah yeah, like you see now they are trying to keep the pac-12 alive but I only think that's because, like, nobody else wants to pick them up. But I do think that the Big 12 has some interest in picking them up for expansion. Um, Yeah, like, court documents show UW, Oregon, expected to be. Yeah, there's a 99% chance we could see. Yeah, like, all of this is, like, you know, predictions and inferences and stuff like that. But... I do think that 
you know, Oregon State and Washington State probably end up either joining the Big 12 or the Mountain West Conference. I don't think they're going to be able to do anything in the Pac-12 because it's like, who are you? You feel yeah. me like? I mean, when it, when it comes to jumping from conference to conference and all the money and legality and stuff, I mean, hire a lawyer to look at that stuff. I mean, you and I probably aren't very qualified to look at something <laughs> like that. But, yeah, I hope they do end up finding a home. But as for the game, I think they win. They, all right, this is really the only really easy game. UAB at Georgia. Should be Georgia pretty big. Um, is Georgia the main dog going forward still? Because they did kind of struggle against South, South Carolina. Gave them a scare. I picked them to three P. And South Carolina did come out guns blazing, but after that, they didn't do anything. Now, Georgia, I still think they're trying to figure out their identity on offense. But I still think Georgia is the team to beat in the SEC because they're the team in the SEC that has the least concerns, maybe outside of LSU. But LSU, we still don't know what team they are. You feel me? Like, yeah, yeah, they look good against Mississippi State, but... I mean, Florida State roughed those boys up pretty bad. It could have just been week one, you know, and maybe LSU wins out from this point forward. But as far as any other team being able to beat Georgia, maybe Tennessee because they played them late. Maybe Kentucky, but I don't know. Kentucky, they're undefeated, but they haven't done it the way I thought they have. And Missouri is kind of looking like they're about to have a breakthrough season. I think that Georgia is the clear-cut team, the beat in the SEC. But, you know, I was high on Georgia before this season. Like, I think they're going to three-peat. I also picked them to three-peat. My college football playoff, my, my the four teams that I picked, looks good and terrible at the same time. Because, okay, last year my playoff was Bama, Ohio State, Utah, and Texas A&M. That was awful. Texas A&M had a losing record. This year... I said Tennessee would go 12-1 and and beat Georgia and win the SEC. So I had Tennessee at 1, Michigan at 2, Georgia at 3, Texas at 4. So Michigan, Texas, Georgia look good. Tennessee probably not going to happen. But I, what I said is I said Tennessee would beat Texas, Georgia would beat Michigan, and then Georgia would get the revenge on Tennessee. So I had a completely new playoff outside of Georgia. I had Washington. I had – who else? Had Washington, FSU, and Texas. I'll tell you, you were a lot higher on Washington and Florida State than I was because I thought those were two teams that I thought were a little overrated to start the year. You know, I forgot that I picked Washington to win the Pac-12, man. Like, this whole time I was going off the assumption that I picked USC. I picked Washington. I and picked Was- Utah to win the Pac-12 because I thought Utah was the most experienced team. And, I mean, they're the reigning champs. Why, would, why wouldn't you pick them? Because they've kind of owned USC in the past. but uh, All right, time to move on. Texas at Baylor. So, Baylor... Baylor... Okay, Baylor can revive their season, really, if they win this game. I don't think Baylor fans really care about any other game on their schedule other than this game and TCU. Because TCU-Baylor is a crazy big rivalry. But will they be able to do it? This is a Texas team that did... Have a bit of a scare against Wyoming. A good Wyoming team. That Wyoming team knows how to play. But is Baylor going to be able to get possibly a season-saving win home against Texas? No chance. So. No chance. You seen that quarterback play, dog? Blake Blake Shapin. Blake, I dated a girl over the summer that went to Baylor. She was like, Blake Shapin sucks. She's like, this guy's terrible. And I'm like... I don't think he's that bad, but he, he is. Bad. I wasn't. I didn't think that neither fan, but it's like they have no QB, and is he even healthy? Because they still had that Sawyer Robinson know. dude in, and he was boo boo against a a Jabroni last week. Ba- Baylor's in shambles. I I can't even lie. Ba- Baylor's in shambles. I mean, they got a win against Long Island last week. I mean, still though. I mean. He went two of twenty-two, dog, against Long a Island what? Did? A FCS school? Wait, he Long was ten Island of twenty-two. Went two and twenty-two. Yes, he went ten of twenty-two. He was bad. Damn. Yeah, Texas. I I'm saying Texas big. Yeah, te- Texas. But I think Dave Aranda, Dave Aranda 
probably will have them up for this game enough to keep keep it close for the first three quarters. And I wouldn't be surprised if this game was close, but I think Texas should at least win by two possessions because that quarterback play is just so bad. And it's like Texas offense is just so overpowered this year that I don't really think too many teams can slow them down. All right, next. It, okay, when you have a Penn State whiteout game that isn't even on the featured game list, that's how you know you got a really good week in college football. Penn State hosting Iowa, CBS, primetime. Who you got here? I like Penn State because I still don't think Iowa has an offense, even though it's a better, more improved offense than what it was last year. And you got a better quarterback in Kate McNamara. I just think overall Penn State is the better team. Now, Iowa being Iowa, you know, like, with them having a slightly better offense, you know, their defense is going to come to play. They are going to keep them around. And Penn State and company didn't really look extremely dominant against Illinois. It wasn't a fantastic performance out of Drew Aller. And against this Iowa defense, you know, Iowa defensively, they are tough. And just based on that, it is going to be hard to see this game being a complete blowout completely. I could see Penn State 28-14, maybe 31-14, but I don't see any way how Iowa's offense can have a lot of success against this defense. They just don't really have a lot of talent there outside of what they have up front. I think – here's the thing. Iowa has potential this year because – Iowa with a slightly better offense, you could maybe see that as like a top 10 team because Iowa, you know, you know, you're going to get the defense, you know, you're going to get the defense, but the offense is always just so awful to where you're like, Oh, if they have a halfway decently competent offense, this could be, this could be a great team. But while I think Iowa will have some potential this year, they're not beating Penn State. Penn State uh, is the real deal this year. I know Drew Ale had a little bit of a subpar week uh, this past week against Illinois, but I think he'll come to play in this in this game. I think Penn State ends up winning. All right, next game, we got four more games and then the two big ones, the two main games. I'm saving those two for the end. I threw this game in just because I just because I'll be at the game. Uh, the Akron Zips travel to Bloomington to face my Indiana Hoosiers. I don't know what what do you think of IU that I don't know if you've watched or paid attention to very many IU games. Do they okay, do they have what it takes to make a bowl this year? Ah. You do have a nice defense. Okay. The that t- defense Tom Allen is pretty- always has a good uh, he would normally have a pretty good defense. Yeah, like, that defense is pretty good. Like, that defense, we thought it was Ohio State. Maybe they just were out of sorts on offense. But you did the same thing against Louisville. If your offense can be a tad bit better, which your quarterback does look capable, you're going to roll Akron. Jackson. David Jackson's a four-star transfer from Tennessee. Uh, Trace Jackson Davis, the basketball star, is his older brother. So, I don't know if you knew that. But, like... I don't know if you watched the game at Louisville, but that I was at that game in Indy. Oh my God, that was an excruciating loss because they were getting trashed in the first half. Yeah, came I thought Louisville was going cover. Yeah, came all the way back and got stuffed on the half yard line. I was, I was furious. I think we'll beat Akron, um, pretty easily. Akron sucks. Um, I don't know if ball eligibility is on the table. I will say we we are definitely beating Michigan State. Like, I don't even think there's a doubt about that game. Like, I think possibly you guys could be a bowl win team. Well, you guys could be a bowl eligible team. Because if you guys beat Akron, you go to two and two. And then you got to go against Maryland, Michigan. You can beat Rutgers. So that's that's three wins there. Illinois. I'm saying the last four. I'm saying the last four games are all winnable. They definitely are. Wisconsin is a potential upset spot where they could lose to you. Purdue, like, you guys may be two of the worst teams in the Big Ten this year, at least right now. No, I think it's possible. 
I mean, I think that Rutgers game probably is key because Rutgers also has the possibility of getting into a bowl game also with the fast start that they've gotten out to. So for Rutgers, this game against Indiana possibly could decide who goes bowling and who misses out. That's an eligible. So we call that. All right. Next, we got UNC at Pitt. Really? UNC Pitt just looks like they're about to have a down year with Pat Narduzzi. They got Phil Jacobovich as their starting quarterback. Like, that fool was garbage at Boston College. They have no QB. Like, Pitt, they're in for a down year. UNC, I think they're the most overrated team in college football right now because they're ranked, but they're not good. Quincy, like, their team should literally be renamed from UNC to Drake May Tar Heels. Literally. I mean, well, they, they looked they looked really good in that first game against South Carolina. But, I mean, double OT against App State, they looked pretty good. I will say, I'll chalk Minnesota, that Minnesota game, I'll put that in the good win category. Minnesota's usually a pretty tough team to beat. Pat, P.J. Fleck usually has his team playing some pretty good ball. So, but it, yeah. It's like that Minnesota game, Minnesota's quarterback play was so bad like yeah, bro they need a quarterback bad. yeah minnesota definitely does bro. i just think with unc they're just too like the same knock that people have on colorado not being able to run the ball that's the same thing you can say about unc yeah i agree uh all right next uh another game starting to they need to stop putting these games at 10 30 at night i I couldn't. I I could barely keep my eyes open for that Colorado Colorado State game. I ended up falling asleep in like the third quarter. I was so damn tired. Um, but at ten thirty on Fox, USC at Arizona State. Um, this is an Arizona State team that you know. At a, I mean, they got shut out by Fresno State. I mean, I actually didn't even realize how bad they were. Okay, they got shut out at Fresno State or against Fresno State, and they lost to Oklahoma State. They have a three-point win against Southern Utah. So, I mean, is there any chance they even keep this close? Possibly. Possibly. I mean, mean, maybe. Maybe. Maybe Maybe if, you know, Caleb Williams gets sick and, you know, maybe he gets a little bit of the flu and USC just forgets how to play football, then, yeah, maybe. But outside of that happening – Probably not. And the sad thing is that I picked Arizona State to cover against Fresno State. I knew Fresno State would win, but I was like, man, ain't no way Arizona State's about to get blown out by... They got blown out by Fresno. Yeah, I mean, hey, Fresno's got two power five wins. They beat Purdue and Arizona State. I think USC... I put that... Okay, I'm going to have to change the score. I put it at 41-31. I'm putting this at 41-0. They're getting blown out. (laughs) This is not even worth all right, lastly, before the two big games, Cal and Washington. Real quickly, who you got? I got Washington. Blowout fashion. Yeah, Cal. I mean, hey, they almost beat Auburn. They're tr- trying. They're trying. At least Cal is trying. They did bring in a pretty big transfer portal class. Yeah, I mean, this might be a Cal program that's maybe turning it around, but they're not beating the Washington looks really good. I'm 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 glad Michael Penix is thriving somewhere other than IU. His talents really need needed to be somewhere else. Uh, all right, now we got to talk about the two big games. First one at three thirty. This is kind of the app. Honestly, this might be the main show. This might be the main show. the The first real true test for this Deion Sanders led Colorado team. They have to go on the road at Oregon. I know you're. I know you've been a big Colorado guy all off season. I know you're a big Coach Prime fan. Are they going to be able to hold up at Autzen Stadium? This is this tough, is tough. And, it and it feels like it, like it like shouldn't, shouldn't be, because most, most people are going to pick Oregon. Okay, and it's like, I get it. Oregon's so much more talented, but we've seen this story before. We've seen it before, and it's like. Colorado, even without Travis Hunter, they got a shot to win this game. Oregon doesn't have a defense, okay? And it's like Colorado, with Shadur Sanders, they're going to be able to keep up with anybody on their schedule. 
But Colorado, they don't have a defense neither. I'm going to go with Oregon. But I don't okay. say that confidently because I really believe Colorado can beat Oregon. I really do. And this is just a magical team. They just find ways to pull shit out of their ass and win games. Like, if this is a close game, how does Colorado not win? I I can agree with that. Here's, here's kind of where I'm going to lose a little bit of hope on Colorado. The first game, TCU, I think, definitely just completely overlooked them. They are like, oh, these guys, oh, oh, they have a, oh, they have Deion Sanders as their coach, but they don't got any talent on their team. But the word is kind of, kind of out on Colorado. I don't think this is going to be a game where Oregon goes out and overlooks them. And Oregon, big advantage getting it at home. I was really concerned watching Colorado against Colorado State. Because Colorado State, for a really long time, has been bad. Like, really bad. Well, this is the Colorado State was getting disrespected all week. All week, anything anyone could talk about was how badly Colorado was going to come in and beat them. And how Colorado State's going to get rolled by 40. And they, they damn near won the game. They took it to double overtime. They were leading for the majority of the game. I don't know if that's just trap game for Colorado because they were looking ahead to Oregon. I don't know if that's co- – because Colorado State came out like a house of fire in that game. They were also hitting people like 10 seconds after the play it ended, but that's 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 a discussion for a different day. I think Oregon wins. I think it's close. 21, yeah, I don't think they covered. 21. 21 points is a lot. for 21 points is the spread. That's a lot. For a team that struggled against Texas Tech. Yeah, I think I think part of Colorado's struggling is they were looking forward to to Oregon. Oregon, I uh, think wins of these next two games Colorado has at Oregon, home against USC. They're getting it one. I think they have a better chance to win at home against USC. I honestly think it's Oregon because Oregon, yeah, they got a high powered offense like USC, but. I think their defense is still as bad as what it was last year. I don't think their secondary can slow down Shadur. My only question, the only way, like, I think the only way Colorado gets throttled is if their offense just gets shut down and defensively they just get bullied because Oregon is really good running the football. They got a superior offensive line. Like, it's going to be a long day for Colorado's defense getting off the field. I don't even think they really got to put the ball in the air that much, but they will. But really, if they wanted to win this game just running it, they could. But I do think that their defense does create turnovers at really big moments. They are, like, top five in turnovers per game with 10 which their defense is similar to how USC was last year. Not great, but steps up and gets big stops and big moments. But I think the question for me more so is like, can Colorado's defense get like a couple of stops to like stop the bleeding that they're going to receive? Because I mean, Oregon's offense, they might go for 80. Yeah. I mean, they they already went for 80 against Portland state. I don't know. I think, I think it's going to be tough for Colorado. I I will say I would definitely pick them to cover if I was a betting man. Um, but, yeah, I do like Oregon. I just think, I don't know. I am not a big uh, Bo Nix fan. I think Shadur, I think it's, I think Shadur is a better quarterback. I don't think Bo Nix is really that great. But, I mean, Oregon, I feel like, will be bigger in the trenches. And, ultimately, they get it at home, and I think they win the game. All right, now... The main event, the game everyone has been looking forward to all year, and kind of people are starting to think about differently the way because originally people thought one of these teams was going to win and one of them was just going to get blown out. But the way these two teams have played, it they're really starting to kind of even out. Number six, Ohio State at number nine, Notre Dame. Primetime matchup on NBC. Who comes away in this fight? Notre Dame finally shows they can compete with the big boys. I like them to beat Ohio State. I still have questions about Kyle McCord. That's the quarterback. He had a poor showing against Indiana. He has looked strong in their last two games, but they played Youngstown State and 
uh, Western Kentucky. And he looked incredibly better in those games. But Notre Dame has a really good defense. Ohio State's offensive line, I also don't think is that great. I definitely think that Notre Dame should be able to get after Kyle McCord in this game. Now, on the inverse, Notre Dame has one of the best offensive lines in college football. But Ohio State has a really good front seven. You know, they got JTT. They also got that really good linebacker, Tommy Eichenberg, Denzel Berg. But Notre Dame has some pretty talented wide receivers. And Sam Hartman is a good enough quarterback. He can torch that Jim Knowles defense. And Notre Dame's playing at home. And the majority of upsets that have occurred in college football within the last two years have been when the team that's been the underdog has been playing at home. Alabama lost twice last year on the road. I think Ohio State, they slip up against Notre Dame. I like the Irish 27-24. I, okay. I think this is going to be an incredibly fun game to watch. These are two teams that are both really good on offense and really good on defense. Ohio State, I mean, I, I got to see them play. They played Indiana. Kyle McCord is really not a good quarterback. He looked like he did not know what he was doing out there for portions of the game. I mean, the top, Tom Allen's defense ate him up for portions of that game. I, I'm going to say he's had a little bit more of it figured out. Ultimately, what's decided in this game for me is the quarterback play. I think Sam Hartman is just leaps and bounds better than Kyle McCord. I'm taking Notre Dame, and I really don't think I would ever think this, but, oh, okay, Ohio State's got a good defense. But, like, is it is it enough to make up for that difference in QB? I just don't know. This is an Ohio State team that started at – Three of the rankings are already down to six. This is a Notre Dame team that started out at what, like 17 or something? They're already up to nine. I think I'm almost always down on Notre Dame. I'm almost always the biggest Notre Dame hater there is. I can't stand them. They're my least favorite college team. I cannot stand Notre Dame. But if I had to pick, I think they win this game. I'm rooting for Ohio State. I'm rooting big time for Ohio. I don't like Ohio State either. But I'm rooting big time for Ohio State in this game. I want them to show out for the Big Ten and put Notre Dame in their place. I don't think they can do it. I don't think they can do it. I, I Marvin Harris is going to have to carry that offense. And well, I don't think their offense is going to have a bad showing because, you know, their roster is a little bit too good for Cobb McCord to be, like, so yeah. underwhelming. They got Marvin Harrison. Marvin Emeka Harrison Buka. had, like, three, four catches against Indiana. But they got Trayvon Henderson too, or Trayvon he's, Henderson. He's a, that guy's a dog. I will, I, I will admit that Trayvon Henderson, that guy ran through. But so does Notre Dame. Like we keep talking about Sam Hartman, but Ohio State fans, how the hell are you going to start? Um, stop Austin Estime. People Chris already Tyree consider him the best receiver. running back in college football at this moment. Yeah, Chris Tyree too. He's also a very talented receiver that they got. I just. Like, they're very, they're even, and I think, like, okay, I think Ohio State's front seven, Notre Dame's offensive line mostly cancels out. I think a lot of stuff you could think about is even this game, but Notre Dame gets it at home and they have the way better quarterback. I just, I just think that they win. Ohio State's offense might be more overall talented. I think Notre Dame wins. That is it for us. 26 games. My God, this video is over an hour long. If you stuck with, Everything all the way through. Props to y'all. Make sure you guys check out JT's channel and podcast. I will have it linked all in the description. He really does some great stuff. I'm on there sometimes. Please go check him out because he really has some great stuff. Do you have anything else that you want to plug or leave with? Man, just make sure that you guys go ahead, like this video, subscribe to my guy, Quincy Bell Sports, man. Good content and Give the JT Sports Podcast a five-star review. You can find us on all podcasting platforms, Apple, Google, Spotify, Amazon, wherever you get your podcasts from. You can find the JT Sports Podcast. We're trying to get to 100 five-star reviews before the end of this month. So if you enjoy, go ahead, give us a five-star review on Apple and Spotify. Type in the JT Sports Podcast, and it will pop up. All right. Take care, everyone. Have a great rest of your day.